This is a video response to the user Onision, also known as Greg. I have not made a video response to this user for a very, very, very long time, but down below in the description there is a link to a playlist where you can reference and see my other videos I've made to him, rebuttaling arguments and things that he would say to people. The reason I'm making this video response to Onision is because he made an advice video where he gives a 17-year-old, I don't know, male or female, gives them advice. And I don't have no problem with someone giving advice. Um, but the problem with this video is that he, this 17-year-old this asks the question, they've been put in the hospital twice due to commit, trying to commit suicide, and they say that they've been verbally abused their whole live life by their mother. They've been, as the, the, from the day that they can remember, they've been verbally abused, being told things like you're worthless, that you're not worthwhile, I don't love you, I don't care for you, you're the problem with the family, I should never have had you as a child. And Onision responds, oh so lovingly, oh so compassionately, oh so mercifully, by saying this. Hi Onision, how can I cope with a verbally and emotionally abusive mother? I'm 17, I've been hospitalized twice because of suicidal thoughts, depression caused by the words my mother would say to me. First of all, I don't think you can really blame your suicidal thoughts slash depression on anyone but yourself because that individual could say the same horrible things to another person and they wouldn't have the same response. So you have to take some accountability and realize that if you focus on being stronger and not letting it get to you, that you'll be much better off. And in that, it seems like the real blame falls on you because the bottom line is, is the person with the most control over you is you and not her. So don't you think the person with the most power and control in a situation where some kind of crime or bad thing occurs should be held to the highest level of responsibility or accountability? I would assume so. Like your mom could probably say a lot of horrible things to me and I'm not gonna be suicidal. So anyway, to continue, they say just today I asked her to take me to Walmart and offered her $15 gas money and she told me to take that $15 and shove it because it wasn't enough. So? I can't count on family because she's brainwashed them all into thinking that I'm the main problem. Well, as I explained before, you're in control of how you feel. You shouldn't blame how you feel on anyone but yourself because of the fact that you have the primary power and the primary control in every single situation involving your emotions. You seem to blame a lot of your problems on them, but the real problem is that you're considering your mother to be reliable. Whereas as soon as you realize that she's not reliable and you stop counting on her for these things, you will no longer have these negative feelings as intense for her anymore as you will no longer be negatively affected by her. What with your significant emotional removal from any situation involving her. So let me get this straight. This 17 year old male or female needs to take accountability for their emotions and change the w way they've been thinking. They just need to stay strong and think more positively. They just need to realize that the problem is with them. Their suicidal thoughts, their depression is because they're just sitting in a black pit of self-pity, you know. They're blaming everybody else for their problems. <laughs> Greg, You've said a lot of crazy dumb things, but this is by far the most ridiculous, pathetic thing I have ever heard come out of your mouth. I guess what really saddens me is that you have a fan base, young girls and, and young guys who look up to you, you know, between the ages of 10, 17, 18, who look up to you and ask you advice like this, and you, they ask you a simple question, how do I deal with these thoughts? And you turn it and you switch it around and say, it's your fault. It's your fault. Hey, did you know that if you feel guilt from being sexually assaulted, <laughs> that's your fault. It's your fault for being sexually assaulted. Sexual assault victims, verbal abuse victims, grow up having a lot of emotions. And you tell this person that they should control their emotions. This just shows me your ignorance on childhood development, Greg. And it sickens me because you're victim blaming a person who is a victim of verbal abuse. If a child grows up in a household from the day they can comprehend what their parents are telling them, and that child is told that they're ugly, that that child is told that they're not loved, that that child is told that they're a piece of crap, that that child is told that they're nothing, that that child is rejected by their own parents, verbally abused every single day of their life, told how much of a piece of scum they are, that I wish you had never been born. That child, up until age 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, is going to have an identity. That child, that teen, that adult, is going to have very low self-esteem because their parents 
verbally abuse them. When you grow up being verbally abused your whole life, when your parents tell you things that you look to your parents as a reliable source to take care of you, but instead your parents do the reverse and abuse you, you're going to grow up having really, really bad depression. You're going to feel, wake up every day and feel like crap because you know that your parents don't give a living crap about you. In fact, your parents say it to your face. You're ugly. You're fat. You're a dirty little slut. Verbal abuse from your parents. And you say it's, it's his, his or her fault. That they need to buck up. They need to grow some balls. No. They don't. The problem is with the parents. Because when a child is born, they're looking to their, their parents for a reliable source. They're looking for their parents to take care of them. And for you to sit there all arrogantly speaking as fast as you possibly can, thinking that you know the answer to everything, and then victim blaming, which is what you are doing, victim blaming someone who's been verbally abused their entire life, you haven't been verbally abused, have you, Greg? You didn't grow up with your mother abusing you your whole life, did you? Because I know if you did, you wouldn't be saying the crap that you're saying right now. I get pissed when people say that it's someone's fault for something they cannot help. It's really important that we don't let our emotions control us. Hell, I'm getting emotionally invested into this video. Emotions are not inherently bad. But feeling suicidal or depressed because you've been verbally abused, that's natural. What also really shocks me about your response, Onision, is you say, well, if your mother was to say suicidal things or mean things to me, it wouldn't affect me. <laughs> are you that daft, really? Are you that daft to actually say that? Oh, well, if your mother said these mean things to me, it wouldn't affect me. Of course it would not affect you. Because it's not your mother. You didn't grow up with being abused physically or emotionally or verbally. You didn't grow up with that. My own mother, my mother, grew up being verbally abused. And my mom, to this very day, has self-esteem problems from that from being told terrible things when she was only seven, eight years old. And my mom's almost 60. I wish I could, I wish I could somehow po post this video to the person who asked you that, that question. Because what they need to hear is not that it's their fault. What they need to hear is that they need to find a psychiatrist or a therapist. They need to talk to someone about what they're going through. They need to save up money as fast as possible and if they can, financially, get out of that harmful environment where they're being verbally abused. I'm not sure if you're aware of this, Greg, but how a parent raises their child determines the self-esteem and the identity that that child will have in their future. Parents are a child's biggest influence growing up. And that influence can be for the positive, or that inf inf influence can be for the negative. And in this particular case, the parents are influencing that child for the negative. And he's seven he or she's at 17 years old and, and thinking about suicide because of the truth, not truth, but because he thinks it's truth that, of what his parents are telling him that he's worthless, that, that you're nothing, that I wish you'd never been born. When a child is, is raised hearing these things every day of their life, they are going to be depressed and have suicidal thoughts. My advice to you, Greg, is before you give advice to someone, think about it first. Try to understand the position that the person's in, and by all means, please don't contribute the idea 
that it's the victim's fault. Yeah. The victim. It's your fault for feeling that way. It's your fault for feeling depressed because you were sexually assaulted. It's your fault for being verbally abused. No. The fault is of the parents in this particular situation. And you need to realize that.